So I'm just going to make a, a couple flat tires on this old uh, sedan, undecorated sedan actually, number 1370 by Athern Trains and Miniature. It's just, it was a couple of bucks I think I bought an undeck sedan and it's not really specific. It's not really specific as to uh, the name of the car or model. Okay, just want to show you how to how I make a tarp here. So I'm going to take a piece of tissue paper, um, and in this case, I'm going to cut what I would think would be, a, you know, the old blue tarps or whatever they call them or whatever, about the size like that. Whatever size that is, it doesn't really matter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dip it in water, and I'm just going to lay it across like this. Now, I'm not going to put any matte medium or adhesive yet because I want to be able to peel this off. Uh, and then I can add matte medium to it later to stiffen it if I want. But this will probably stiffen up fairly good on its own. Which is water when it dries. Like, uh, it'll have some shape to it. So, that's all I'm going to do. And then just... I want to have this door open a bit, so I'm going to just drape it over, give it a little bit of weight, okay, just like that, and then when it's dry, I'm just going to peel it off and then I can paint it separately, okay. and then drape it over top once the car is painted, all right? Okay, so let's just have a look at this little tarp. So uh, this method will, will work with any scale. O scale, N, H, O, 135th, whatever. Uh, it's like, uh, it's no respecter of scales, if I can use that term, this method, I mean. It, it, it's so, uh, you can see, so it's dried. It was just water. Remember how it began like this? All right, it was just a piece of tissue. This is, uh, I don't really know the name of this tissue, but it's a kind of, uh, you can see it has a little bit of stiffness to it. Uh, so. so you can see that uh, this just pops off basically when it's dry, right? So now you can treat this one of several ways. Um, you can airbrush that. Just dust it uh, lightly with, uh, in this case, it'll be blue. Dust it down, dust it down blue. And then once the car is painted, you can just apply it back on with matte medium. Okay. Or you can pre-paint the car, then do this, because you're not using glue to shape it. You just put a wet tissue on there, shape it, and then it falls off the painted car. Okay. And then uh, you can paint it that way. Or you can just glue it on like that and paint it on the car if you want. But I want to have it so it's nice and crisp. So I'll paint it separately and then put it on after the car is painted. Okay. So I'm just going to use my normal go-to Give or take dark brown, which I call umber, for a lot of pre-shade and just dark areas. So, you can see how thin that paint is and I'm probably at, what am I at PSI? 30 PSI, see the small line you can do? It's just a cheap airbrush really. It's 25 years old, so. 
I find a lot of airbrushes are overrated. I think people get too caught up in all the cult of uh, what's the best airbrush. Well, if you don't use it, it's useless. Right? You just use what airbrush you have. If you have a good compressor, that's what you really need. I can, I'm going to darken the inside. I notice I had to put the dash in there and stuff because it doesn't come with one. I can always brush paint some of that. Okay, so here's an interesting perspective, white on white. <laughs> so this is the tarp. I'm just going to uh, paint this blue now. It's so light, it'll the high pressure will blow it everywhere, but I'll just give you an idea. Oops. It took off on me there. Here's some really light blue. So I'll just give it a dusting over. It's almost gray looking. That's okay. Okay, so you can see I took the dark brown now base. I just took a little bit of beige white and dusted a little bit along the bottom. I'm going to paint this by hand with Phileo with wet on wet, I think. I have a, uh, a lot of fun when I do it that way. And with small models, it seems to work really well. It works on any scale, really. It's just a fun method to do wet on wet over top of, to me, a base spray. But I want to add a little variation, some just fade there like that, because that'll show through some of the wet on wet colors. And I wanted to, I was thinking about the color of this. I was thinking of this kind of a pinky maroon, you know, from the 50s, that kind of colors. But I'm not really sure. I think I have enough warm kind of red going on in the scenery. So I'm going to uh, go with this pale, very pale uh, sort of banana yellow. Uh, this car looks to me like it's probably 50s. So that was a color that I think that was... Uh, often used and of course I'm gonna get a lot of it by hand of course you can't really tell Tell the difference, really, though, can you? You almost want speckling and paint anomalies when you're doing an old wreck like this. I just want to show you quickly how I clean my airbrush and why it's so easy with IPA. So see how I, okay, I finished painting. The paint was thin anyway. So I just take an old brush that I have dedicated to this. Clean the cup, clean a little bit of the outside. All right. Take a little bit more IPA, which is far cheaper than thinner, right? Plug the end up with my finger. Back flush. You just plug the end, pull back in the trigger. You see how it bubbles up? You're blowing back all any paint pigment which is saturated in IPA already. You're blowing it back into the cup through the chamber here, through the head, etc. 
and then lift away and then spray some through like this. Okay, dump it out because it's a lot of maybe tainted thinner. Take a little bit more, spray some more through, leave it in the cup. That's what I do. All right, so this is all under two minutes, right? I just pull this needle like this, give it a wipe with IPA rag, okay? Slide the needle back in. It's clear as a bell, right? And even if there is paint, just like I leave a little bit in there, you know, just a little bit, like I don't blow it all out because it'll evaporate anyway. I put my airbrush away for a month, even if there's Tamiya paint in there, if it's just Tamiya. And as soon as you put IPA, 99%, okay? which you can get this stuff on sale too, like 50% to 99, doesn't matter. Either 50 to 99 will do. You can get this cheap if you shop around and it's the way to go. And I thin all my Tamiya paint with it mostly. Like if I do really, really nice paint jobs, then I'm gonna use the Tamiya thinner. But for the most part, I don't bother because it, it just doesn't matter. Um, okay, and so I clean that airbrush in under two minutes, right? So you know, you can spend as much time as you want, but I don't tear my airbrush, I actually tear it down with, to me, I do it maybe once a year. That's it. And this is good to go, right? Like this, this airbrush is even with residual paint in it, I'll just blow it out in two seconds and it's good to go. And when I change colors, I just blow out the first color and I chase it with the next color, blow it through as long as it's not white. Okay, but if there's any of the dark colors, then I don't worry too much about that. Now, if I'm painting a locomotive, which I will be soon, uh, I'm not going to use IPA to thin the paint with that I put on the locomotive. Like the main color livery, I'm going to use the Tamiya recommended thinner just to be on the safe side and whatever. But I really don't think it matters that much because I use IPA to thin 50-50 their flat coat and their semi-gloss and gloss and it looks beautiful. Okay. Okay, so how's everybody doing? So this is one of the parts I love the most. So I've basically found about a two hour window, you know, in my day here. So I can sit down and just start painting this car or weathering it. Um, and like I say, it's been built up to where I want it and it's been based out with some Tamiya with the airbrush. Now I'm just gonna play around with water and Vallejo. And just since I'm on that topic of Vallejo, this is the airbrush thinner uh, that you want to use when you spray any Vallejo paints. Uh, don't use IPA with Vallejo. It reacts funny. It sort of gels the paint or just it just doesn't like it. So I would recommend that you use this. This doesn't really have any odor to it. I don't even know what it is. Um, they don't really tell you what it is, um, which is fine. It's their, their uh, patent, I guess, but um, when you pop the lid off and you, and you check the odor, it doesn't smell like anything. It just smells like um, almost soapy water or something. So I don't really know what that is. I don't believe it's ethanol-based, but um, whereas an ethanol-based paint like Tamiya, uh, you can thin it with IPA, okay? But you can also thin Tamiya with probably this thinner or water as well. I know that. So there you have it, right? But I'm just going to use water on this. I'm going to zoom in a bit closer and then just play around and have fun. But uh, what I basically do is I just set up a bunch of colors of paint. So let me just tilt the camera back just a bit here. Um, you can see I have a series of yellows. Like here's some whites and then some rust and darker colors. Uh, I like to have three or four uh, yellows, like the card's going to be yellow and white two-tone, and then th there's three variations of white here. Well, there's a stone, port stone, 
basic white, um, aged white. It helps to get familiar with your paints and your colors. But there's no real written in stone methodical way that I do this. I just go with what I feel the colors I want to work with. And I may not use all these colors, but I want to have them on hand. So when I start moving paints around, because it's always trial and error, you know, uh, like if you're not trying new things or just experimenting or, or, or with a sort of practice method, because every model in a sense is a practice model for the next one. And then you just quit at some point or hope it turns out good. And they don't always turn out good or to your liking. That's just the nature of it. If you're so locked into to, to producing the perfectly painted model, then you're never really going to get anywhere. You're not going to get out of that rut because you're putting way too much pressure on yourself. I've painted a thousand models. Really, I have over the years from models like this to movie models. And you're never going to be completely satisfied. There may be a few that you go, okay, that's almost perfect. But that's a trap. It's a complete trap to think that way when you paint a model. Um, so, and if you're not feeling that confident, then, then uh, just use a bathroom blue box or a cheap model, right? And practice on it and then go from there. That's all you can do, okay? Notice the colors that I've already applied are like the head of a pin. That's the amount of paint uh, that I've used. Like all this paint you see on here is, is really a complete waste. And it's just a tiny drop or two, right? So. The nice thing about having the model wet all the time is it'll blend very, very nicely for you. And in this case, um, you should be okay with uh, flood marks. And this particular yellow paint is not mixed as well as it could be but I'm okay with that I'm going to leave that because it's leaving different little uh, more richer pigment anomalies on it which I kind of like right now So that's all you do, is you just make sure the model's wet and use tiny, tiny amounts of paint. Like way less than you could ever imagine. And keep it thin 
so you can see the color develop and the fade. I mean, that already, see, you know, a lot of times when you practice enough and you realize a model, there's way less paint that goes on the model than you actually ever realize. One of the main things that people do wrong early on, or uh, if I can use the term, you know, when they begin a weathering process and, and they're in the early stages, is they just use too much paint. It's way too much paint. You know, you almost want to know. <laughs> You're using too much paint. Um, And there's no particular order either. Uh, you can say, well, shouldn't you do light, go light to dark or dark to light? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you don't like that. Maybe uh, here's a different yellow. Or right, you gotta find your own style, right? You gotta find what you're comfortable with. Aged white is a really nice color. See, that's too much paint there, see? What I just added. It's just too heavy. But add a bit of water and move it around a bit. See what it does. Okay, so I've basically let this dry. Like, um, I know somebody mentioned a quest, uh, question a while back. Uh, uh, when do you let the layers dry? Well, there's no easy answer to that. You just have to decide. So I was playing around with uh, three or four colors here, right? A little bit of, uh, I think I had a little bit of burnt umber uh, in there too. Um, sometimes I like to wait for that, but... I just did it while it was still wet and I'm okay with it, but a very tiny amount like where water would have pooled up back there and then where the, um, you know, the heater vents on the outside, I put a little bit there and then just a little bit on the front, okay. But you can see the, see the base coats here, the to me underneath, you can see how it all starts to work together, right, when you think of layers, very thin, thin layers, right, again, right. You want to stay away from opaque layers, right? You want to make sure all your layers are transparent. So now what I'm going to do here before I uh, play around with some white, and I'll talk about white in a second, is um, I'm just going to add a little bit of um, silver. Now some would say, why would you use it as a wash? Well, I can go over top of it later. And I like to use water first because it helps cut the line nice and tight. If you're going to use straight paint, um, you're probably going to get paint on other parts that you don't want it. If you just wet the part first, uh, you'll see the paint will capillary. I'm going to leave those light uh, parts. I don't want to paint them silver. Uh, I'm not a fan of painting light bezel silver. Besides, I bet you these ones here were probably all gone anyway. But a little bit of gloss paint, uh, even over a dark color, I find looks good. Like in, like in terms of scale, and we are dealing again here with 187. So very small amount of paint here. Okay, in this case, uh, did I show you what that was? It's just the silver, which I really like. This 71.063. There's aluminum too, which is pretty, pretty close. Um, and I'm just going to touch in a bit of that. Just like that, okay. Just enough to give it a little suggestion of some chrome going on there. And then we'll do a little on the side because they had these big old bumpers, right? 
one of the just the bumper alone on this probably weighs as much as a Fiat 500. <laughs> um, yeah, just put a bit on there. Maybe a little bit here. Just enough to suggest and that water will help blend blend the edges or soften the edges. Now, while I'm on this part, I'm going to be going over to white here, and I just want to mention something. Um, I don't use pure white hardly ever on a model, and I'll tell you why. Um, I mean, I will on this at first, like as a wash, and I'll try to explain to you why, but. Understand that when you go from white to black, you're at the end of the spectrum, like you're done. Like if you're going to do a super dark shadow, you want to save that black, pure black for the final shadow. And the same with the highlight, like with white. Like for example, you have these three whites by Vallejo here. You have you know, aged white, then white, and then white again. But you can see that they're clearly not the same colors, right? They look almost flesh tone these a little bit. But when they go on the model, they look really good. But I usually save this for the very end where I want to really highlight something. Like, um, this is probably not recommended to do this when you've been using silver paint because you get silver particles in the paint. But, um, like here, I'll just take a bit of a wash and some white because this is a two-tone car. And uh, you can see how bright it is. Once again, very thin, okay? Not pure white onto the model, but into the water. We want to let that color, that gray, umbery, oversprayed Tamiya, we want to let that play as well, right? We don't want to cover it all up, right? In fact, there would probably be a fair bit of rust. You can put paint straight on the model like this too, but make sure you chase it with water. I didn't do the rear bumper. You can see one of the skirts is there, see? It had skirts over the rear quarter panel. So you can see that there's how the paint has settled a bit there, right? Like I wasn't thinking that at the time, but I think I'm going to leave that, you know, as a layer, okay? Okay, I just want to show you quick what a pin wash is. You know, there are other terms out there with the younger generation that's kind of hilarious. Taco sauce, you know, that kind of thing. You know, you can buy all those, but all but all's they are, those washes are just thin paint. That's all it is. It's diluted paint. I know the hobby shops will hate me or the paint manufacturers will hate me for that, but it's all it is. So uh, you want to be careful too. Um, I don't like to use black personally, but uh, I'll just do a little bit on the hood detail here and on the fender and show you. So this is dark sea gray and uh, we'll just run a little bit along this uh, panel line there a little bit and then a little bit in the in the vents Uh, you can see, so it'll change the, the shade, the filter, the yellow filter somewhat, so that's one thing when you're painting like this, you know, use tiny, just come in first, just test it first with a tiny, like just a pin, like a pinhead. See what it does. 
And if it's too much and you panic, just take some water and then wash it away. So it's nice to just get a wet brush, lick it off, or don't lick it off, but wick it so it's wet, your bristle. I like these when they get a bit of a cow lick on the end of the, the brush. You probably can't see it from there. And then you just take a tiny bit, and then you just come in and do some little dots like spotted paint over some of the darker areas. So this is pure white now, right? This is why you save it for last, because if you use it too early, then you've exhausted this opportunity. You use faded white for basic basing in white, and then use this to highlight. And then since the car is black underneath, I don't know how much of this will show because of the tarp. But I'll just show you what you can do here. You can, I'll do it on the side that I'm not going to see normally. So I want to do a bit of a side swipe. So let's just do one along here. Let's just. So even if I scrape through the paint, It's black, the black plastic. Ah, the Atherns plastic, right? So let's have a look and see. So this guy's driving along, the sixth owner of the car, a young guy or whatever. He's been out a little bit too late on his way home or maybe it's parked on the street and somebody comes along and whoops sorry And this might have got sideswiped and took off the, the wheel skirt, right? Cool, hey? Isn't that cool? Okay, so do you ever get into a model sometimes and somewhere in the process you decide you want to add an additional detail. So this is why um, I like the style that I build when I flesh out a scene. Um, if I'd have built this car before the Slumlord alleyway, like where that retaining wall is, I wouldn't have known to model this side of the car the way I chose to do it. So I was thinking, okay, so I've added a tire there that'll be flat. These these will be up against the wall and one of them's tucked in under that that um, fender guard there, or skirt. 
Uh, this one won't matter so much. Um, that'll just be a regular tire like this. But I decided that I would build a front clip. <laughs> so this is the front end clip. And then what I'm going to do is, is uh, here, I'll take this off and show you. So I can slide this in. And then I decide to have it forward. The wheel turned. I want the wheel turned a bit or backwards. So I figure I'll put it backwards because it might give me a chance to see it because it's mostly viewed from this angle. So I put that clip in there like that. And then because it would have probably have been drum brakes, uh, even if I did a disc, it wouldn't matter because you don't know, like maybe the guy put a front end disc mod on it. One of the owners, this, this car has been around for 70 years, right? So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to glue this on and it looks like the, uh, the disc part where the drum goes over. Okay. So I'll just attach this. This is all from evergreen scrap. Okay, I'll nibble this off down so it'll just be like a little hub. Like that. And I'll slide this back in. And then you can see it's the, just the hub with the wheel missing. I mean, if you really wanted to go OCD, you could put the tie rod, but you probably won't see it. I mean, it is 187 scale and sort of almost <laughs> severe OCD. Here we go, right? But it is a nice touch, though, because it's this is the predominant feature of the car that you'll see, right? And adding that little detail with it, like, it's little things like this that really, you know, the, the, the hood tilted up a bit. Um, okay, that really make a difference. And since I'm on this topic, I've mounted the the uh, tarp on, and I want to show you now with straight matte medium, right? You know, everybody knows I love this as an adhesive. And when you're gluing paint to paint, you never have to worry with matte medium because it is a paint. It's a paint adhesive. So it won't uh, blister the paint like a CA will or a solvent will. So like, see this tarp here? So I've been gluing this tarp on and you can see the beautiful line along here on this tarp, right? And how the matte medium just grabs it beautifully, like almost like a dry decal. It turns this into, see along the, the body there, how nice it lays, like it's got weight to it. So uh, this is what I do is I take some straight matte medium with a wet brush, just to soak the brush first is a, is a good rule of thumb and grab some straight matte medium and then just Paint the back side of it like this, okay? And you don't have to worry about any glue bubbling up or smearing out because it'll dry transparent, flat, okay? You just press it down and it loves paint so much. Look what it does. Did you see how that went down like that? And there's no glue on the fingers. It's water-based. And there's no blistering of paint or fingerprints. It's just, I know I preach matte medium, but if any modeler doesn't have matte medium on their bench, they're hobbling themselves. Okay, and you can even dilute it to, to wick it into things to change, um, you know, textures and things, right? You can even smear a bit and get it onto things, then roll it down and it'll dry flat if you use it thin enough and your tarp lays down nice with weight on it, okay? Okay, getting right down near the finish here. I'm gonna get her done, right? Um, you can see I decided to install a windshield. Uh, I wasn't going to, but I thought, ah, I'll give it a shot, I'll challenge myself. Now I've done this before uh, with the tow truck and other larger scale models, obviously in the past, but 
not often in this small 187 scale. I've seen other methods like people use tape and so on, and I think that works too. But uh, this way I find it to be more rigid, and I like to use, once again, this GAC 500. It's very forgiving. It dries quick and clear. Uh, mind you, uh, it'll leave a tape line, but I'm okay with that on this particular car because of the weathering I want to put on the windshield. But uh, if you uh, apply it carefully, um, just wick it in. It, it's brilliant stuff. It, uh, like it dries completely clear and uh, you don't notice you know the glue that really that much and you can always touch it up with a bit of matte medium or flat coat like acrylic uh, with a brush and if you want to wick things in you can take a little bit of water just like acrylic paint because that's what GAC 500 is and you can mix up a, a little wet slurry and this stuff is really really potent uh, when it's diluted as well and you can just capillary it in to the seam so i'm going to let that dry just like that And I'm going to put a little bit of a piece of a tape on there just to pull it back. 